Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, happy holidays, guys. Yay. I say happy holidays because I know, you know, some of us celebrate Festivus. Some of us celebrate Christmas, some of us celebrate Hanukkah. So happy holidays. Um, but obviously we're all decked down or some of us are decked out in red, ready for, you know, uh, getting ready for Christmas. Um, and just like excited to have you guys here. I know we've got some new managers on the Zoom. I see Cassidy um, popped up. Um, so guys, if this is your first time joining us, I want you to do me a favor. Um, on your little screen where your beautiful face, face pops up, the top right hand corner up here, if you hover, there will be three little dots. Click on that and say rename, put your name up, and then add your community afterwards. Um, and that's just because, again, we have new people on, um, not everybody knows each other, and it's nice to be able to see what community y'all are with. Um, so that way you guys can get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and again, appreciate y'all being here. So what we did or what we started just to give a little context for, for our newbies, um, what we started in 2020, which, oh my gosh, guys, it's going to be 2022 in like two seconds, um, is that we started doing these, uh, zoom meetings every third Thursday of the month. Um, and unless it falls on like a holiday or something else, and then we you know, push it back or something. Um, but we started doing these as a way to just interact, right? A way to be able to see each other, share what's going on with our office, hear from you guys, um, share ideas, um, and really, you know, just be able to interact, have some of that human interaction, um, you know, and it's, it's stuck. And I will say it's something we're planning on continuing doing throughout 2022. Um, again, as a way of just staying connected and being able to, you know, we're all about uh, R&D, which means rip off and duplicate. Uh, <laughs> and anybody who's been here for a while will tell you that. I see Brandy was shaking her head, you know, Ellen smiling, like, you know, this is, we are all about it, right? So we are not one of those industries where uh, everything is secret and proprietary and, you know, good luck, you're on your own. No, we are all in the trenches together. And so one of the things that I love the most is that, um, you know, we can R&D things. And so that's, you know, one of the great reasons to come to these, um, you know, that Thursday once a month is, you know, again, we talk about what's going on at the office, things that are happening around the state. We try and, um, you know, share cool things that are happening in other communities so that we can learn from them again and figure out how we can best rip off and duplicate that and make it work for our program. And I will say that, you know, um, managers who have been around for a while will tell you it's not always like I take exactly what you've done and apply it in the exact same way. You know, every community is unique. So that means we have to uh, approach it in a unique way and apply it in a unique way. But um, I think, you know, it's it's so nice to be able to use that collective brain power <laughs> and, and figure out how to address things, solve things and elevate our program. And I, I keep looking at Abby in Tifton because I feel like our shirts almost match and I, I love it. And I love the earrings. I, I'm like, man, I wish I had some like Christmas wreath earrings going on right now. Um, so uh, real quickly, uh, I just want to Elizabeth say hi. <laughs> Elizabeth is our downtown development historic preservation planner and if you're a newbie she's probably the first person you've met um, she is the person that gets uh, you know first contact with all of our managers our new managers and um, is that person who's going to hold your hand and guide you through this entire process she will become your best friend your life support um, and everything your therapist and everything in between uh, she's amazing. Uh, Tara Bradshaw with the most beautiful non fake background going on right now. <laughs> Good morning and thank you. I worked very hard on it. <laughs> Is our economic development specialist with our office. Uh, Tara. So Tara comes to us from a GEMS community, uh, was formerly in downtown Dublin, um, and she has done some amazing things in Dublin prior to joining our team. Um, and if you have questions about downtown development authorities, organizational structures, 
should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Um, and needing some direction on projects, especially. Um, Tara is the person to call, reach out to. I will preface that all of us have been on our team have been doing Main Street for years. So we have local experience. Um, we have state experience. We can all pretty much, for the most part, answer any question you have. But again, all of us each have kind of little areas that we love to work in, right? And that are kind of like our little passion projects and things that we truly enjoy doing and leaning into. Um, and so I'm just kind of highlighting those today. And again, I'm the director of the office. Uh, Tess can't be with us today. She is our communications um, specialist. All the newsletters, Facebook, anything that comes out from our office goes through Tess first. Everything, everything. Um, and we have uh, some cool stuff coming to you guys in the new year that um, Tess has had a heavy hand in. We've got a website refresh. And I say refresh because we're not like completely changing anything up, but we're just giving a little bit of a facelift. You know, it's been on Zoom for a couple of years and it's, you know, seeing that maybe it needs a little, you know, tightening up. Um, so the, the website's going to have a little bit of a facelift coming very, very soon. Um, we're, I'm so, so excited to be able to share that with you guys in January. Um, but Tess is incredible. And I would say too, if you guys just need help to kind of like, how do I elevate myself online? How do we tell our message in a better way? How do we communicate who we are, what we're trying to do? Please feel free to reach out to Tess and use her as that resource. Um, she was formerly um, in a, in a former life before she got into Main Street and or into our world and working at the state and stuff like that, she was actually uh, on the Main Street board in Macon. So she actually has seen Main Street from the side of a board member and been one of those volunteers before and can kind of speak to that. Um, so we all bring a little bit of a different background. And one of the things that uh, I love to talk about is um, organizational development and leadership uh, development. So I'm that person that you want to call when you're like, I really just need to vent, or this feels like someone's asking me to do something crazy and I don't understand it, or I have a board member who is really fighting me on something. How do I address this? How do I help shift their perspective? Um, and with that being said, uh, I will be offering something new in the new year called uh, one to one uh, leadership prep. And what we're going to do is once a month for five months, starting in February, uh, we're going to get together and talk about different things. And so it's all geared towards new managers in new positions and trying to figure out um, how we can help empower you to be the best version of yourself, right? How we can get you that support system quicker, how we can help you with conflict resolution. Um, I will tell you, you have so many personalities that you deal with um, in Main Street and uh, it can be a lot and it can be overwhelming. And um, I think that anybody will tell you, uh, you know, when you're new, it is so much to take in. Um, but the longer you do it, it does get easier. I promise. It really does. And some of that is because you build your support system. You build your systems for how to do things and how you want to do things. And you have um, this history that you're building on and you have these relationships that you're building on and it does get easier, but we got to get you to that point where it gets easier, right? Because the first couple of years, it feels like a lot and it's very overwhelming. And so um, some of this is to help get you there. So um, Tara or Elizabeth, if you could. Um, just drop in the chat box uh, a link to our training calendar um, because that is up and ready for 2022. If you haven't checked it out yet, please go on and do it. Um, I will say that everything we do, whether it's um, in person or online, except for like um, we have like a January webinar, most of our stuff is limited in capacity. And some of that is because we want to drive interaction, right? So we want to be able to have intimate settings where we can talk freely and be able to have discussions and it doesn't feel like you're just in a massive group of people whether it's in person or online um so just just putting that out there uh you know seats are limited uh but we we are doing stuff in person 
and we are doing stuff virtually. So trying to balance um, the world that we live in. And I will say that as of right now, you know, um, the things that we have planned in person, we plan on keeping them in person, um, kind of, you know, short of like, you know, Ebola crossing with the flu, crossing with, you know, um, you know, coronavirus crossing with um, typhoid Mary, you know, and it, you know, and it just being like super dangerous. Um, you know, we plan on on doing these things because we're gonna do them safely, right? We're gonna do them in small groups. We're gonna do it safely. We have, we understand public health measures. We understand safety measures. We can wear masks. Um, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying, you know, we have these processes in place to help kind of keep each other safe. Um, so we plan on continuing to do these events in the future, uh, in 2022. Uh, okay, so I think I've kind of, yes, Elizabeth. I can't remember if I'm muted or not. Am I muted? No. Nope. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to change my background. Uh, <laughs> something <laughs> festive. Um, I just wanna go ahead and point out a couple of the new managers. Uh, and so I want you to wave when I say your name so that people in your area can know who you are and you guys can connect. Uh, Frank, you wave your hand. Uh, Frank is the new manager in Forsyth. Um, so we talked yesterday. Um, he's been there for a little bit, um, but he this is his first third Thursday call, I believe. Um, and then we have Colleen. I just saw you. Where'd you go? Colleen, she is the new manager in Locust Grove. Um, and so Colleen, your regional rep is actually on the call with you. She is Tracy Sanchez. Um, so she is a great resource for you. She's also on our DCA team. And then also, where did you go? Um, I love, oh, Cassidy, there you are. And so Cassidy, wave your hand. She's the new Main Street Manager in Tybee Island. Uh, Michelle is still with the city of Tybee. She just has been uh, promoted to the Assistant City Manager. So yay for Michelle. Um, but Cassidy is gonna be the new content for downtown and she has a background in downtown with Alabama and she actually worked with, worked with Statesboro um, for a little bit when she was in college and so she knows Alan and Elena so I'm um, really really happy to have her back into Georgia um, we had a call had calls with all of them yesterday so um, or over the course of the week so I'm really glad they were able to make the call so yeah introduce yourselves um, if you're in the area plan something to meet up um, we all know how being a new manager can be a little bit of overwhelming um, so make sure to you know help share uh, with them and make their first year a great experience. Right. And I think we also have um, Jillian in Fayetteville. So Brian Wismer is still in Fayetteville, but Jillian, I think, is his new sidekick. Is that your you're the new like sidekick to Brian? There? Oh, awesome! <laughs> um, we'll schedule a call soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so um, welcome, welcome our new guys. Um, again, you know, this is this is a good opportunity to hear ideas, share ideas, get to learn from other people. And I would say, Ellen, can you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about GDA and maybe mention the mentor program? Yeah. So hey everybody, I'm Ellen Hill. I will take over the role of GDA president um, starting in January. So keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I do actually have several announcements for GDA, so okay. it kind of worked Hit out it. perfect. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, so um, many of you have probably gotten your dues uh, notices in the, your email um, or mail. Remember to pay your dues. Um, if you're not a member, let us know and we will um, get you signed up. You can go to the Georgia Downtown Association website to get signed up there. You can reach out to me. Um, or any of the other board members, or Emily Davenport, who works for Georgia Municipal Association. She's our, um, our staff person that staffs Georgia Downtown Association. Um, if you've looked at your email and you're a member already, recently, I think yesterday, um, balance went out for the slate of officers and new board members. Um, go ahead and get those turned in. If you don't have it on your email, you're probably getting one in, in the mail too, because per the bylaws, we have to send out mail ballots still. So, um, but just turn one in, don't turn in both. I would, I did mine online yesterday. So that was super simple. Um, again, mentor mentees, um, I think Christopher Pike, I don't know if he's on the call or not, but um, he's taking mentor and mentee um, applications until the end of the month, I believe. And then he's gonna cut them off. And then if you don't get it in by the end of the month, we'll just wait till the next round of mentor mentee. But if you are interested in being a mentor, um, and have been in the role for a little while, we would love to have you um, join up. And if you're new, 
all the new guys on the call, if you're new and want to get involved with being a mentee and getting uh, joined up with someone who's been in the job and just, um, you know, kind of learning the ins and outs or if you have questions or whatever, it's just a good support system. So you can reach out to me or you can reach out to um, Christopher Pike and uh, he is in the city of South Fulton, right? Mm -hmm. um, so also, um, if you do have a men mentee or mentor and y'all get together, if you take some pictures, <laughs> send them to me or to Emily, because we're trying to push like the mentor me mentee stuff on our social media channels. So um, take lots of pictures, send them in, and we can get those posted to our social media. And speaking of social media, um, we're really trying to do the, I know the DCA, you guys, Jessica, do um, the hashtag GA Main Street. So when you're doing GA Main Street hashtag, remember to do GA Downtowns as well so that we can get stuff shared um, on the association website and social media channels as well. Um, and then one last thing is um, national conference is coming up in May. We'll open up scholarship applications probably January, February. So um, go ahead and get those turned in if you're interested in getting a scholarship um, for the national conference. It pays, I think, $1,000 towards your travel expenses or a registration. Um, that's a really great, but just remember that if you sign up and you get a scholarship, you have to help with the silent auction at the conference for us next year. So that's your, totally that's your string. It. It's worth totally, it. It's fun. Totally worth it, guys. Totally yeah. worth it. <laughs> and then since we, speaking of scholarships, um, we do also have the Adam Edge Scholarship, which is always open. And so that is a $350 max um, matching scholarship for any training that we do in the state. So this mobilized Main Street that's coming up, you know, in March, that would be perfect for that. Um, all of that information is on the Georgia Downtown Association website. So if you guys have, um, you know, a need or want to get a little extra cash for that to help help offset some costs, that would be a really great source. So, Absolutely. And I'll put some contact information in the chat so that if you need Christopher or me or anybody, I'll, I'll put it out there so you guys can reach out. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ellen. And sure. I know Tara did drop the website in the chat too. Okay, so cool. You guys can see that. Um, and I would say, you know, um, I think a lot of managers will tell you both uh, the Main Street world and GDA, they are what you make of it, right? So the more active and engaged you are, the more you participate and tap into things, the more you get to know people, um, the more, you know, opportunities and resources and things you can take advantage of. So I would highly encourage you to just, you know, jump into the deep end of the pool. It's nice and warm down here and <laughs> we're happy to have you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Ellen. And, and I would say, um, especially with the Adam Edge Scholarship, keep that in mind, guys, because um, so if you don't know, Adam Edge was a manager that um, we lost to cancer in 2020, beginning of 2020, um, and Adam was a huge life force. Um, he was just someone who was so vibrant and passionate about life, and he was so passionate about education and training. It was one of the things that he was just such an advocate for, self-improvement. How can I how can I make myself better? How can I help make my community better? And so being able to honor them him this way with this scholarship where anybody can access um, funds to go to training, I mean, that is, that is just something that I feel in my soul that Adam would have just been so proud of and love. And we know that when you're in a small community, budgets are tight. Honestly, budgets are tight for everybody, right? No matter what size community, but budgets are tight, right? And a little bit of money like that can go a long way. Um, and there's other things you can consider too, like the National Main Street Center has um, an online certification process. And those classes, it's a series of classes, but those classes can be like $250 each, which they're great and incredible, but we all know that adds up, right? So, you know, again, take advantage of these resources and opportunities out there. Um, you know, you don't have to be trying to fund this alone. You don't have to be trying to do this alone. Um, so I'm so grateful for Ellen mentioning that to us. And, um, you know, we do have some of our regional reps on here today. Tracy, uh, you know, was waving at us earlier. I think I saw Natalie join us. Um, again, 
for existing and new managers, remember that you have DCA regional reps. Every single region throughout the state has one. Um, and these are your first line of defense for everything. They know they are these like subject matter experts in a little bit of everything. Um, but the great thing about them and us is we're all connectors, right? So our job, if anything, is to connect you to the right person. Um, so, you know, that's what we're here for. Um, so if you don't know who that person is, if you don't even know what region you're in, that's okay. Um, you know, we can, we can help you with that. Um, so uh, Tara, will you drop in the chat box, our main street at DCA email, you can always send us an email at this, uh, at this email address, and it goes to our entire team. And so the great thing about that is whoever's on deck, whoever's available can respond to you and help you with whatever you need at the moment. Um, and so just shoot us an email there and we can go from there. Um, so one of the other things I wanted to just quickly talk about before we get into kind of like celebrating 2021 and preparing for 2022 is that you may have seen that we are hiring and I am so excited about this. Um, so for those of you who've been around with us for a while, you will have remembered Carmine Fischetti and the design studio. I can't talk about it because I don't want to cry. Um, but <laughs> Carmine, uh, he had been with the agency for 20 years, been with the Office of Downtown Development for 20 years, had this huge background and knowledge from, um, you know, being a, an architect, uh, or not an architect, a landscape architect, <laughs> and doing all kinds of planning. Um, and he has moved on to start his own company. And he's doing this, what he was kind of doing for us as, in, as part of the agency, but now on his own. And I am so proud of him and love him so much. And I, I just couldn't be more happy for him. But what this has done is given us an opportunity as an office to kind of look at how we are structured and figure out how can we do what we do better, because the agency has let us keep this position. Um, and so while we're not bringing it back in the context of design services, we are hiring uh, what we are calling our Main Street Compliance and Training Coordinator. And I will say, like, you will see it as Main Street training and compliance coordinator, compliance and training coordinator. It's all the same thing. Um, I use the words interchangeably because I'm literally making this job up as we go. But no, really, but our team has sat down and talked through this and said, okay, what can we do to help you guys? What can we do to help our team? How can we um, provide you know, the best, highest use of our time and, and go from there? And so the idea is, in case you don't know, our entire team is remote based. So that means we all work out of our homes 99% of the time. Um, and I mean, 99% of the time as in like, I'm in the office. I, I technically have an office at DCA and I do go into the office for manager and kind of like, you know, leadership stuff. Um, but the rest of the team does not have any more a physical office at the agency, um, but they all work out of their homes and then they're on the road, right? So if they're not, if they're not at the house, they are out in a community and that's how we function. Um, and that, you know, has been an evolution over the years, but that's where we're at right now. So this position will be able to work from their home office anywhere within the state. Um, and the idea is that what we're doing is that Elizabeth has some components of this, Tara has some components of this, I have some components of this right now. And what we're doing is kind of taking these little pieces from each of us and putting them under one person. So it doesn't mean that training will only be under this person and, and Tara, myself, or Elizabeth will never talk about training ever again. No, that's not real. Um, it just means like registration, you know, will run through them. Some of the organizational components for that will run through them. Um, and with uh, the compliance stuff, it doesn't mean you'll never talk to Elizabeth startups. Don't worry. Don't panic. You're, you, she's not going anywhere. You're not, you're not being taken away from her. But I have gotten the, several calls when the, the posting went live and it's like, are you leaving? No, she's not going like, anywhere. Like, you're you're compliant. What is this? It's like, wait, you still get what? to talk to her. Um, yeah, but things like, <laughs> things like emails about my report, <laughs> you know, things like MOUs, um, stuff like that, that's, that can be a little bit time consuming and just, it, it's the duck kind of scenario. Like we look like we're all calm on top and we're paddling like heck underneath. These are the things that we are doing in the background that you never see, but just take time. Um, and so bringing on this other person allows us to each take a little bit of that off of 
ourselves and focus it under one person. And so that way we're making sure we're not dropping balls um, that <laughs> that's funny, Christmas balls. Okay. So we're not dropping anything, um, you know, that we are making sure that we're doing everything we need to compliance wise with the national main street center, because that's another component that you guys don't see. Um, and making sure again, that we're not having to say, Oh, we'll talk to this person about this. And then this person about this and da, 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 da. again, just trying to centralize some of these conversations. Um, so I am excited about this. The job is posted right now. Um, I think you can look at it's like if you just Google like DCA jobs, you know, um, it, it's up there. I, I look at Tara. I think she's probably trying to find it right now for us to post because um, I know her. Um, but uh, the thing is, it does close next week. So um, typically DCA only posts jobs for about two weeks. Um, and that's because we only need two weeks because everybody in the world will apply. Um, but we're, uh, it'll come down next week and with the hope that we have someone on board beginning of February. Um, and some of that is because we want them to be a part of the assessment process that's coming up, um, especially with them being in compliance. So. <laughs> Um, if you feel like this is something that you're interested in, if you feel like you know somebody that would be a good fit for this, please um, share it with them, um, you know, apply, reach out. Um, yeah, we're excited. I'm just, I'm excited to be adding to the team, to be growing the team, um, you know, and to be able to bring you guys uh, this new position, right? Um, and figure out how we can do what we're doing and do it better. So, all right, I feel like that's enough unless there's any questions. Elizabeth, one, I know you, you wanna hit us up with reminders about assessments. I'm sure, I'm sure. Hey everyone, it's your friendly compliance <laughs> officer for the time being. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so annual assessments are due January 15th. That means the checklist or your the full, sale ass full scale assessment document if you are presenting city is due and all the supporting documentation is due in Dropbox on January 15th. Also, remember, December is the weird month where that's the only monthly report that is due um, at a different time. It is also due January 15th because we want to just close out 2021. Um, so make sure you have that final report submitted by January 15th. That is the due date. Also, remember to submit your November or your, your November reports. Um, and some of you will be getting an email later today because some of you have some delinquent reporting um, out there. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, so you'll probably get an email from me later today about that. Um, yeah, those are the two big things. Also, if you all of a sudden you're like, oh goodness, I wish I had reached out beforehand. Um, I'm freaking out a little bit, or I want somebody to check over my Dropbox to make sure I'm not missing anything. Please, please, please reach out. This is our job. We, this is not supposed to be overly burdensome. This is to help, you know, support your community. So if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask. It's all of our favorite jobs. Um, to actually, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with communities. So please do not hesitate to reach out if you need help. Um, everybody has to learn somehow. Um, also with uh, monthly reporting, if you have any updates for the year, if you found out a building sold in February, you just found out, please send us the information regardless. We want to make sure that that, um, oh, what is it called? The uh, the total uh, community public community. investment yeah. mm -hmm. um, number on your uh community impact report for this year looks awesome. We want it to be a super healthy number. So if you know you need to update something or you're maybe your financials were a little funky, um, please, please, please reach out. Um, uh, you know, we can correct those on the back end and send you updated reports. We just want to make sure that all of that is accounted for. So those are kind of my, my updates. Um, email me, email Jessica, email Tara, email Main Street at dca.ga.gov. Um, we just want to make sure that we have all those ducks in a row for you. And we want to be helpful. So Yes. And I will say that each of us on the team will be taking time off over the holidays. So um, we try our best to set our out of office and let you know when we're going to be gone. Um, but that's where that sending something to the entire group helps. So that way, because we will have full coverage. I mean, we will have coverage. There's always somebody working. Um, but just again, to make sure that you don't have to send an email to one of us and then to another one and then to another one trying to find somebody, um, just shoot it to that general email address. And that way you don't have to like you know, keep doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, all right. So I want to take like the last 30 minutes and really just focus on like what you guys are excited about in the new year um, and what you feel like you're most 
proud moment is this past year, whether it's personal or professional. So, or you can do one of each. Um, I'm not going to be that person that like makes each person do it. Like we're not at Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, you don't have to like go around and say what you're blessed, you know, feel blessed about. But I feel like we don't always get an opportunity to brag on ourselves, right? And we have to be comfortable with that. We have to be comfortable about sharing our victories, being proud to talk about it, because if we're not proud to talk about it and we can't talk about it comfortably, how is anybody else going to do it for us, right? So like, I think, and I will say this is typically for women, right? We we feel like we shouldn't, you know, it's, it's not okay to to, to brag about what you've done or what you've accomplished it, you know, we're just supposed to be like, oh, yay, you know, thank you. Yay. Okay. That was great. I was lucky. No, it's not luck. It's hard work. Right. Um, so, you know, I want us to kind of get in our comfort zone of being able to say, Hey, I'm awesome. I did this, or we did this as a program, or I did this personally, professionally, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yes, somebody kicked me off. Or I will call on somebody, but somebody who I know who won't hate me for calling on them. I'll go. Yay! Go Karen, go Karen. Well, first thing I'm so proud of is I just learned how to do the virtual background on Zoom. <laughs> Small victories. <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was, I'm not going to try it, forget it. And I did, and I did, and I think it looks really good. Y'all like it my does. Eyes. It looks, it like looks legit real. <laughs> um, second thing I wanted to say is I made it through my first year as Main Street Director, celebrated my one year anniversary, October the 26th. And oh um, in true R&D spirit as a Main Street manager, I hosted a coffee and conversation with the Main Street director um, out at one of our local coffee shops and invited the public to come and share, um, just have a conversation with me about things that they enjoyed about Main Street, um, what they would like to see. And one thing I did was had everyone that stopped by to complete um, their name and maybe email address. And if they had one thing they'd like to see happen, uh, change or develop in Main Street, they had to list at least one thing that they would be willing to do to support that. I like that. I like that a lot. So, so I have a, a list of people who um, have shared some ideas and things that I'll take into consideration, but I'll also be able to employ them to work or put some um, skin in the game to make it happen. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and I, the next thing is I'm a part of the mentor mentee program, which I'm um, really excited about. And I know people thought that I really didn't need that with the community that I'm coming from with the footprints that I'm having to follow in, but I have really benefited from having Denise McKay as my mentor mm -hmm. so far. Um, she's stellar, excellent, um, superb manager. Um, her hands are in everything. And I just, have benefited already from resources over the three times that we've met, um, things that I can think about. She um, builds up my confidence. And so I'm super excited about the program and being able to do that. Thank you for that, letting me know about the hashtags and if we take pictures, cause we are planning to visit. So I'll be sure to do that Ellen um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and send that to you guys. And um, just wanna thank you all for your support. Elizabeth, thank you for calming my nerves um, on, on multiple occasions and helping me to feel like I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And Jessica and Tara, thank you guys for your excellence in work. Um, I'm super excited about the leadership prep series mm -hmm. um, and very happy because I'm a big uh, lifelong learner. And so I enjoy training and will definitely be applying for the Adam Edge scholarship, so. Thank you. Oh, oh my gosh, Karen. I can't believe it's just been a year. Like, I really can't see guys. This is what I'm talking about. Like when you're on the job for only a year and it feels like you've been here for like 
you know, five years, right? I mean, if you'd if you'd asked me how long Karen's been here, I'd have been like, I don't know, two, two and a half years. <laughs> but that's great because I mean, she's gotten, she's dived in. You know what I mean? Like she's jumped into the deep end with us. Like she goes to training, she participates, she shows up, she reaches out, and so then you build these relationships, and you feel like we've known each other forever. Um, and you know what she's talking about is like Madison is one of our gems communities, and they have you know, an incredible foundation for a program, but at the same time, it's very intimidating in some ways it's to step into a program that is so fully developed because you really don't want to feel like you're letting anybody down and they have these really high expectations. Um, you know, so we always think about, oh, it's really tough when you come in and, you know, somebody's out of compliance or stuff is out of sync and you're like, well, no, it really, it's, it's tough on either end. It's just a different kind of tough, you know? Um, <laughs> so congratulations on making it past that year, Mark. That is huge, 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 huge. Um, and we're, we're so glad to have you. <laughs> Renee, I want to hear about your, um, I know I'm just like calling on you because I saw your, your smiling face and uh -huh. you're always such a bright spot. And I was like, I need to hear from Renee. I need to hear about something that she's like looking forward to in the new year or something you were really excited about that happened this year. Well, we've done a lot this year. Um, actually, um, our Main Street board, we had a Christmas party on this past Monday for the business owners, which is the first time we've ever done that because this was the first year we've almost raised $100,000, the CPMA <gasps> board. And so we were over the top excited. This is the first year in their history that we've done that much. And so I'm so proud of that. And the um, the business you raised a hundred thousand dollars for the program. Yes, our Main Street board. Yes, Renee, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Which you know what I came to, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Jessica. Y'all, so. I tell this story sometimes, and I never tell the community. And I tell this story about going into a community and sitting with the board, and then having literally five hundred dollars in the bank account. That and was saying, us. Yes, and saying let's do a facade grant, and I'm like, uh, guys. Like you literally have five hundred dollars to your name, and you want to do a facade grant. That was that is College Park. That I is, know, and I never that say who it is. Me. Oh yes, oh yes, 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 guys. This is like three or four managers before her. But I mean, seriously, that's the community. Like that's yeah. incredible. I like I I cannot tell you how mind blowing that is. It is very engaged now, and we're so excited, and I'm excited about what twenty two is going to bring. And also, I preface that with, I came to a community that was not open to public art, well, murals, basically. And since I've been here in the four years, January before years, we put up two murals this year, as well as a piece of public art on the street and looking to do many, many more things. I've been talking to um, I think Ellen and Valdosta about, or, and also um, the young lady in Noonan too, about their painted, I talked to Ellen about their alleys. We worked on an alley. And then um, the young lady in Noonan, about their metal boxes because I'm trying to like put some art on those boxes because we got some on Main Street but just kind of soften the community College Park is a thoroughfare because we have a, a Georgia State Highway and we have Marta right here we have a lot of issues but um, they're positive issues and so it's been a very productive year but the most important thing that I'm excited about for next year is I'm going to be a GG for the first time <laughs> so my daughter and her husband are expecting our very first grand and so that is my biggest accomplishment for next year <laughs> so <laughs> and congratulations Karen for making it through your first year you you uh you set the bar for many so we it is a challenge but it is a rewarding challenge so Merry Christmas to everybody is all I can say oh thank you so much for sharing that Renee I just uh, I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon. Me too. <laughs> it's been a struggle, but it's been a good struggle. I'll tell oh, you what. That's so incredible. So incredible. <laughs> Amy, can I call on you? <laughs> I'd love to hear. Um, I know you've got you've had projects you've been working on. Talk to me about like, you know, what you're most excited about in the new year and one of your like favorite things that you did this year. Hey, y'all. Um, we, uh, just we, several things. We're very fortunate, um, this year we've had a, a very good year with a lot of projects and our boards are very active and 
Um, one of the things we just wrapped up last week is we finished up our Wi-Fi uh, downtown, which is nine in nine blocks, throughout nine blocks. Wow. And the camera, we added a new camera system, um, which with the initial, we have four cameras and we're getting ready to add 10 more. So we'll have all of our downtown covered with cameras. And um, the Wi-Fi fiber ring is what we call it, and the new downtown speaker system. So um, if you could hear, you would hear our Christmas music going on outside, but we're able to control that here and it goes throughout nine blocks. And we kind of got that from Bainbridge, um, from Amanda, we use the same company they did. And uh, we're in our new building this year, a new downtown welcome center. And um, we're just very fortunate and um, very look forward to what's going to happen next year because we did a lot of things this year and and if I can ever be if you ever any of the new managers ever need to talk to anybody or uh need some ideas about something that maybe we've done just reach out to me I'd love to talk to you I've been here a little bit so um I would love to talk to you every town's different and um Amy, will you talk to us real quick about like your business association, your merchants association? Because I saw that there was a discussion about that maybe in the recent weeks, um, people asking kind of about that and how they work and stuff. And I know that you have a very like involved and active and engaged group of folks. Um, we do. And We're very fortunate. We kind of let them run themselves. We're, we, they don't have any paid employees. They have, uh, but we... <laughs> <laughs> Our staff here does all the work for them, but that's okay because as long as we have their buy-in on everything we do, then we think things seem to go a lot smoother. So we really call upon our merchants and uh, when we're doing big projects, we try to put them in the forefront and it just, the more they're involved, the better the projects go. But our merchants association meets monthly and they, they have a membership, I think it's 50 or $75 they meet once a month and maybe 30 of them will be at a meeting and then maybe 10 will be at a meeting. So it fluctuates monthly, but it's normally the same ones, but they, they come together and come up with ideas to help their cash registers ring, like the ladies night outs and, mm -hmm. and um, the things like that. And then that's our opportunity for our office to give, to let them know what we're planning to do and that you know, we do spend a lot of money promoting downtown as a destination and, and they need to jump on and just add to that. So uh, I'm not going to say it's all red roses all the time with them, but we we do try to keep it, keep them meeting so that they will continue to be somewhat engaged. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Love it. And is, um, Millageville, is Millageville on here? Um... I just learned I have a, a connection. Our city manager has a connection with her. So I've got to, to reach out and connect I'm with her. Looking, I wasn't, because uh, you know, you got to click through multiple pages um, sometimes to see everybody. Um, I don't see Carly today. Um, but thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> and I really want to, I got to come down and see the new Welcome Center because I'm, I saw the before, so I really want to come see the after. <laughs> oh, man, it's a lot of fun, and we posted a lot of folks, so it didn't happen overnight, but um, yeah, slow things and, and uh, small steps have met, led yeah. to bigger. Yeah, um, we did have one question from Karen about, do you lead the Merchants Association, or are you more just kind of a... Um, Yes, but we kind of let them think it's their ideas on things. So <laughs> they have, we do all their work. Um, we do have a lot of younger boutique owners that are stepping up. The Our president is a lady that's it's called the Flossy Peach, and you can follow her social media and see that she's jammed up. But um, they, yes, kind of without them knowing that we lead it because it's, it's easier for the merchants to... Um, take lead from the other merchants than mm -hmm. from somebody that's not opening their store, you know, mm -hmm. every day and working all weekends and things. So um, we do all their work, but we, we turn it as if they, they're the ones doing all the work and they're mm -hmm. leading it. And we're just kind of, we're kind of helping them out if that helps at all. <clears throat> no, I totally Every town's different. 
yeah elizabeth um, so right before, so Lisa, we'll get to you in one second. I just wanted to say we did a webinar way back in 2020 before the pandemic with Amy. Um, and it was really, really, it was an awesome webinar. Some of you probably remember it, but for any new people that have joined our ranks um, in the past couple of years and haven't had a chance to watch it, it's a, uh, it's a great webinar. She, Amy talks a lot about her experience in Moultrie and some of the really unique things that she's done to really get people to realize, drive like economic development, not events, but also like kind of how you can turn that and work with your business owners or merchants association, you know, the general public as, as well of like how to do that. It was, it was an awesome webinar. Um, so definitely I dropped the link in the chat. And so if you guys want to watch that also just remember our YouTube page, we have a lot of great information on it. Um, if there's anything that you want, you know, to brush up on it has a lot of great resources um but yeah i just wanted to mention that because it's an awesome 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 webinar if you haven't watched it definitely do because we get this question a lot um and yeah amy's awesome um and so lisa what was your question sorry to interrupt <laughs> where'd you go hey everybody i'm i'm here <laughs> she's um here. <laughs> thank you and i wanted to share stop yes, bridges yes. combined 2020 2021 life because it's yeah. kind of one long year right mm -hmm. yeah. agree agree i've forgotten how to count time <laughs> exactly <laughs> so um it's been every like everyone knows it's been an interesting challenge but some of the good stuff is we were able to install a downtown mural the first ever for stockbridge which is pretty exciting and we were very happy about it um we also um did that with um kira kick in and help me out we got um a grant uh, that Tina Lilly helped us work through. Um, so we're very happy about that. The other thing is that during the pandemic, um, they continued construction on our amphitheater and it opened for the first time this fall. We've had only two concerts, but we've had some awesome acts. Um, the first show was sold out with Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight um, as our entertainers. That what? was so awesome. And we did the uh, Main Street Helped um, organized the ribbon cutting and a lot of other stuff that we never thought we'd ever do. And then the second show had Shaka Khan and Freddie Jackson. So that was pretty great. Um, we are looking forward to next year, um, which will be a full season and have a really nice, diverse um, lineup. And we've got 20 other things going on, including a new um, welcome center slash Main Street program office. Um, right now we're located inside of City Hall, but we want to be on the ground with our businesses. And so we're finally going to be able to do that. And Kira's here so she can kick in with anything I forgot. <laughs> um, Lisa, she covered, I guess, the, the most exciting things, but um, I do want to just publicly commend Lisa for our Small Business Saturday effort this um year it was absolutely awesome with regard to the number of participants that we had we had over 31 businesses participating which when we first started small business saturday we had four businesses <laughs> um three years ago so now we've gotten up to 31 that really actively participate and um, make sure that um, people are circulating around the city of Stockbridge to shop, dine, and do business on that day. So I just really wanted to say thank you, Lisa, for all of the efforts that you put forward um, with that. And um, I also want to say that we're really excited about the possibility. Well, I guess now it's not even a possibility. Now it's definitely a, a done deal. We're going to be moving to the downtown area we're going to as lisa said have an office on main street which is absolutely fabulous for us because we want to be able to be in the midst of our downtown which um i don't know how many of you are not located on your downtown in your downtown district but it's very difficult to work with business owners and keep an eye on what's happening in your main street district if you're um, away from the district so this is very exciting for us um, to be able to um, be downtown. We also are doing um, what we're calling a white box project, which it, there is a building in our downtown that has been neglected and abandoned for years and years and years. So this, we were finally able to convince the city to purchase the building and um, totally renovate it so that um, we can attract a business to come into that particular space. 
And um, it's gonna be to the tune of over $100,000 that the city is contributing to this to make this building one that will be, um, um, I think a showpiece for our downtown district. And um, I'm sad that Carmine isn't here to help us with our, our design for um, the facade, but I think we're gonna be doing a great job with that. We do have an architect that's working with us on that and we're trying to keep the historic character with regard to that building. So I'm really excited about that project as well because um, some of you know, there's that one building that no one will touch and the owners just have no idea of um, what an impact it's making on your downtown. So we were finally able to move on that building and we're excited about that. We also have an alleyway project. Um, again, R&D, we went to College Park and saw what Renee Coakley was doing in her alleyways and we decided that we wanted to do the same thing. So we're copying her and the city has given us the go ahead to totally redo our alleyway in the downtown district. Um, and we'll also be doing a phase two project next year, which will be a um, breezeway project, which will um, help with connectivity between our streets. It'll be connected to the alleyway and um, just make it a lot easier for people to find the parking that everybody thinks is non-existent. And, um, to get to some other locations in the downtown. So we're excited about that as well. Oh my gosh. So Thank you. Going on. Love it. Yay. Congrats. Nicole Gainesville. Last time hey. we met in person, it was prior to the world ending. And <laughs> oh. you guys had so much stuff going on. And I know it's been coming up on two years since then so yeah, i know you've done stuff so i just had my two-year anniversary but it was my first month then and i was told you get to do the presentation on the last three years of the program so that was fun i learned a lot doing that so i'm i'm glad for that but <laughs> um yeah i see think colleen that, you can survive colleen is in the can. same she i had a call with her yesterday and i was like trust me it's okay we've had this before you're gonna survive you're gonna be okay so if you need any like help or inspiration just contact nicole <laughs> yeah and i i am really thankful um like the team i walked into here has been amazing as well so we're one of the 20 percent, i guess of main street programs where i operate under the cvb so, and we have a really great development team. And so there's a lot of development happening, but a lot of that isn't like under my direct purview. We also don't have a DDA, we have a redevelopment authority. So some of that functions a little different here, but um, yeah, we just had, uh, there's just private and public development happening like crazy. And um, so we have a streetscaping project. Um, we have a traditional square and the whole fourth side that was I don't know, it's been a parking lot for years. It was burned down in a fire in the 50s, I believe, but um, there's a whole new project, a whole new fourth side of the square is being built and ready to launch um, probably quarter two of next year. Um, we have, it's called Solis Gainesville, which is a, a private um, apartment complex that's happening. Um, so that's scheduled to open. They're doing pre-leasing right now. We're talking about ribbon cutting for that next year. Um, we've had a lot of streetscaping. We have a new parking deck coming in. Um, we have another private development that happened um, called the National. So we have a hotel coming downtown, which is a huge win for the CVB, um, plus another condo set on that property as well. So it'll be motel and condos with some green space and, and a little bit of meeting space there. Holy moly. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's just a lot. <laughs> Um, and I feel like my main role in all of that, because I'm not directly tied into public construction, is the communication. And so my marketing background coming into this team has been super helpful, um, just trying to really build all the relationships with our downtown businesses and establish those connections. Um, so that's been really great. Just it's taken two years, especially during the pandemic, and I still haven't had face to face with everyone, <laughs> but doing my best to uh, to make that happen. Um, so yeah, and especially when you have all that construction going on, having that communication and letting people know what's happening from the merchants and the public perspective is huge. Yep. huge. And I used the pandemic. Some great things came out of that. Um, I came from a very awesome digital company before and coming into government where everything's old school. I used the pandemic to push digital communication. That was a huge win. So 
Um, I'm very thankful for that. And even just streamlining, like there was no digital forms for anything before. So like our vendor forms, volunteer forms, like all of that's been digitized. Tracking is a million times easier, which just made communication easier. So lots of wins in that, um, in that regard. Um, and I just, I've gotten through all of our annual events one time, finally. So we just wrapped up the humongous Christmas things. Um, <laughs> that's been a win. It's also new for the Main Street program because our historic society disbanded who did our big uh, Christmas on Green Street parade. So even my team's like, we don't know, <laughs> but there's high expectation and 2000 people come. So anyway, those things were, were good to get through one time. And I feel like I'll be able to take on some other projects. Um, we launched Main Street money. So we have a downtown dollar program now. So we've probably spent about just about $2,000 It's kind of been a soft launch, but people are starting to get it and get excited about that. So excited to push that next year. Um, so yeah, so lots, lots of little wins, lots of big wins. Um, yeah. I'm just excited to keep pushing forward. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Elizabeth. I want to call on somebody. Um, Laura Homerville, I'm looking at you. Um, you've had a couple big things happen this year. You want to tell us about them? Hopefully she is actually listening. We'll see. It's a little dangerous sometimes to call on people that don't. Okay, she unmuted. Come I'm, on, Laura. Nobody wants to see me today. This is not <laughs> day, but um, we, we've had a tremendous 2021. Um, we started by uh, applying for the rules on designation with DCA and received that. So we will, January 2022, we will be um, a, DC, or a, a rules on designated city. And that offers three sets of tax credits from the state that um, are just gonna, we just know this is gonna be the big game changer for us um, in moving some of our blotted property and getting um, job creation going on downtown. Um, we also received a $200,000 donation from a, a local nonprofit organization um, specifically geared for um, facade grant improvements in downtown and also to purchase a master plan for Homerville. And so we've been talking with Danny Bivens with the Carl Vinson Institute. And uh, in February, we're gonna be um, having our focus group meetings and uh, public input sessions. And so we're, we're super excited about all of those things. Um, small victories for us are um, eight new businesses this year. Um, and that is huge, yeah. You know, for our community, that's enormous. Um, just to see so many people like, you know, taking the leap of faith and, and opening small businesses and watching them thrive when nobody really thought, you know, over oh, in the pandemic and oh, there's all these things. We've just seen shopping local explode. And, and I hate that the coronavirus happened, but at the same time, it has um, been so encouraging to see our people really, really take the initiative to support each other, to to stay home, to buy local, to support our local community. Um, and then I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, we have a new um, year round Christmas store in downtown Homerville. It's called the Mary Averett and it's housed under the um, Averett House Flower Shop. Guys, it is so beautiful. If you, if you get a chance, come to Homerville, give me a call. I'll take you myself, but it is gorgeous. And um, we're, we're just so fortunate. This has just been a remarkable year and we're praying that 2022 is just as great, if not better. Wow. And Laura, what's your population? Um, our city's population is 2,300 people, roughly. That's amazing. That's amazing. Good job, Laura. You're a rock star. And Laura, how long have you been there? Um, 18 months. So I was six months in when 2021 started. And um, I just, I have a, a remarkable Main Street and DDA board. And um, our community is this, we're just, I mean, I guess we're at the place where it's either we become a ghost town or we thrive and people want to see us thrive. Oh, the other thing was we had a, a hands-on Homerville, a community cleanup day. We were expecting maybe 50 people to come and volunteer helping to clean up downtown. We had 150 people and we had a huge cleanup effort and we're going to make it a quarterly event 
Um, so it, we're just seeing our community participate like never before. It's, it's crazy. Wow. That's incredible. I mean, 150 people show up to clean up. I mean, we all know it's like hard enough to get like your husband and kids <laughs> to clean up in the house, let alone like 150 like people in the community. So that's incredible. Wow. And awesome. then Abby, Abby sent me a text message. She had to log off Abby and Tifton. And she said her like kind of, oh yeah, for the year is her three ugliest buildings downtown sold. And so they're very excited. And they've had a lot of action real estate wise. They've had some, you know, properties that were in a, an estate that, you know, I know we have the old adage and it's awful, but sometimes you're one good death away from revitalization and that's kind of what's happening with them. Um, and so Tifton is doing some amazing things. So when, when y'all are planning, you're like multiple city visit down there. I mean, you got Tifton, you got Homerville, you got Valdosta, you got Adel, you got Hayhira, you got Bainbridge, mm -hmm. Thomasville, you have Moultrie, mm -hmm. um, Sylvester, there's like all of these wonderful places down there. So it's a great region to visit because you can hit a lot of wonderful gyms down there. Yeah. And that's why we do these like mobilized Main Street events because we want to be able to go in communities, not just talk about it, but see it, right? Like see things that are happening. So um, with that being said, we are at the 11 o'clock deadline. I like to respect people's time. Um, the team and I will be sticking around if you want to share with us something that's gone, you know, on this year or something you're excited about next year, or if you just have questions for us. Um, we always stick around for a little bit um, to make sure that if you need some help one on one, we're here. But thank you guys for everything. Um, we're excited about 2022. Um, keep up the good work. I mean, it's so incredible and exciting to hear everything that's happening, despite the fact that we're still kind of in a pandemic. I'm like, we're not out of it, but we're not in it the way we were. I don't know. We're basically the world is not what it was in 2019, right? So it's, it's so incredible to hear about these problems and, and, um, and you know, hear the excitement uh, and everybody's voices about, you know, the year coming up. So um, thank you guys for all that you do. Um, we appreciate you and have a wonderful holiday season. Take some time to be with friends and family and relax and chill. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Bye y'all. <laughs>